CTV's political commentator Scott Ray joins us now live with more on what we can expect from this investigation. Scott, let's start with your initial reaction to this. Well, this is precisely what the government had hoped to not hear. I mean, this tells us that the Ford government is officially under police investigation. This means that on top of what has been a long-standing now, months-long political scandal, it has become a criminal matter. And that is not good news for Doug Ford. And so what do you think is happening behind closed doors in the conversations in the premier's office with staff, with cabinet ministers? Well, I, to some degree, we've seen what's happening in public already. You've seen the minister replaced. You've seen the chief of staff to the former housing minister replaced. Um, you've seen Paul Calandra come in and set a brand new standard. Um, all of those approvals for all sorts of, you know, MZOs, as they call them, ministerial zoning orders, or they just overrule municipal governments and say, you can build here or snap your fingers and la la, there you go, boom, you can build where you want to develop. For all of that is ground to a halt. Staff that were involved with the former minister are gone. Um, they've cleaned house as a government and they're hoping to you know, frankly, put this scandal behind them. Today's investigation means that it is not behind them. It means they're going to have to um, prepare themselves for the possibility that senior staff, uh, senior bureaucrats, ministers, members of the government, perhaps the premier himself, all will be asked to speak to police, maybe questioned by police. Uh, people will be having to hire lawyers or at least contemplate that possibility. And there's all the risks of those who are associated with this decision but not affiliated directly with the government, the so-called Mr. X's and others. All of it is cause for sleepless nights if you're Doug Ford. For sure, there is a ripple effect. The premier has maintained all along that he wasn't involved in the process in terms of deciding which developers uh, got access to the Greenbelt lands. A former housing minister as well has said that he, on CP24, said, I will cooperate with any police investigation. He's since been removed, Minister Steve Clark. Uh, but you're right, there is going to be a lot of legal repercussions here, and I'm sure a lot of people seeking legal advice. But beyond reputation, what's at stake here for the premier himself? Well, I mean, obviously, if the investigation were to ever suggest that there's direct links to the premier or his office, then that's the sort of grenade that uh, blows up directly in your face and has you know, enormous political consequences. Uh, knock on wood, I, I like to imagine we, we won't expect that. If the premier said directly that he wasn't involved and that he had no wrongdoing, then, you know, you take him at face value. But, you know, there are broader questions for the government. So, you know, did did someone make money knowing that the government was making these decisions? Did someone get access outside of government to decisions prior to their actually formally being made? Were they able, in turn, to make money off of that? Uh, there are any links between former staffers, former senior bureaucrats, or, you know, former ministers, senior bureaucrats, and those that are outside essentially selling off MZOs, selling off access to the green belt? as though it were uh, a bake sale, um, you know, all of those questions. And frankly, there are political questions that flow even from those criminal and police matters, which, you know, to say, Premier, maybe you, you say, maybe you're correct in saying that you didn't directly point the finger on the map and say, take this parcel of land and give it to this person. But you created a policy apparatus, a set of decisions that short-ended regular process to permit that to occur. Some responsibility surely falls to you as premier. You can't be the guy who says, I'm the boss, and then duck claim for that. Yeah, certainly this is a pie, a political pie that was baked for a little too long here, Scott. If you're the opposition, if you're Mart Stiles, I mean, you've been calling for a deeper investigation, uh, a stronger look at this. You've been calling for the integrity commissioner to look even a little bit closer. Uh, what's going on behind the closed doors of the opposition, whether it's the NDP, the Liberals or the Greens? I'm sure they'll be banding together and hammering the premier and his party on this issue continuously. Well, they'll pick up on this, and you're going to hear the C word thrown around continuously, and that word is criminal. Criminal, criminal, criminal. Criminal investigation, police investigation. So they hammer away in the government, trying to get them off track, back on the discussion about the green belt. They'll try to say, now, as that investigation unfolds, there's still a whole series of political questions and policy questions that you tried to ignore, Premier. We're going to get you back onto that. There'll be, demand, be demands for a wider public inquiry, all those sorts of things. But also, you know, Beatrice, in a, in a funny way, the police investigation, as much as it rifles this right back up to the top of the news agenda, it handcuffs the opposition in a certain degree, because they can ask tough questions, and they can demand that the government act, but the government is basically 
basically going to say, hey, the police are doing their work. We're not going to interfere. We're not going to comment any further. The last thing we want to do is say something that might cause their work to be uh, somehow disrupted. So we're just going to sit silently. That's going to be the stock answer, just what you saw already from the Premier's office. We'll cooperate, fu cooperate fully. we got nothing else to say. If there's any wrongdoing, then we will act on it. And so the opposition are going to have to get creative to find ways to keep this story alive one, two, three, four, five days after the announcement of the police investigation. Yeah, certainly this story is far from over. We'll have to wait and see if any criminal charges are actually laid by the RCMP. CTV's political commentator, Scott Reed, thanks so much for being here this afternoon. Thanks, Pete.